Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over the UFC card for this Saturday from a betting perspective. Uh, and as you guys know, we take a very contrarian approach, and I appreciate all the great feedback. People have been, well, number one, they've been winning uh, using this approach, but more to the point, they've been kind of learning how to how to approach things like this, which is really what my, my goal is with these videos. Um, the, the ability to look at lines and look at the public perception in a in a in a sharp way is, is a skill that can be developed and can carry over to all phases of wagering whether that be betting on mma betting on sports betting on the stock market betting on everything um so i'm gonna before i forget we're gonna go over the rules first this way i don't forget them uh rule one is we are going to bet every fight on the card and we have 12 fights to bet on uh, again that's not the greatest money management tool in the world but i don't care we're also going to bet exactly one unit on every fight. And one unit for me is $180. Again, betting one unit every fight, probably not the greatest money management system in the world, but I don't care. We're doing this kind of for fun and just to always have action. And the other thing is that in the last fight of the night, we are always going to bet something that will get all of our money back for the previous fight. So in the main event, we're going to be betting something that is at least uh, 11 to one because we plan on losing the first 11 fights. Um, and I always consider whether I'm going to approach these breakdowns with more of a sarcastic tone or more of a, of a serious tone. And we're just going to kind of see of how this kind of plays. But you will see me put all these wagers in and let's just get right to it. Um, first thing I would like to note is that it never ceases to amaze me. Every single, every single week I do this, I, I wonder why I wait until Friday. But then I, every week I'm, I remind myself why. Every Monday, I look at the, the fight card, and I can't imagine how any of these fights are going to have some sort of consensus. They all look pretty reasonable to me. And literally by Friday, the entire industry has completely converged and has set not only like who's going to win every fight, but, but exactly how each fighter is going to win. And it's just amazing. And, and again, the philosophy here is that if everybody is on a particular narrative, I'm not saying that that's not going to happen. I'm just saying that that is by definition going to be overvalued. Okay. If everybody's on a particular fighter or anything like that, I'm not saying that they're going to lose, but I'm just saying that that fighter is probably going to be overvalued. That's just the way markets work. Um, whenever there's a narrative, which is such an easy story to tell, people will get on it and it will be overvalued. That is just the way, you know, wagering works. Um, so let's just get right to it. So Koreans, and now the other thing before I get into it, sorry, is that it's not always going to lead into huge underdogs. I mean, sometimes we'll end up betting favorites um, or favored uh, props. Um, certainly that's not as much fun, but again, we're just trying to be contrarian and fade the public here. And we're going to get to some examples of that. So let's just go right to it. So Kareem Silva against Marina Morose. So essentially the, the, the consensus around the industry is that they just have this line wrong. I mean, and, and you see this, this sentiment in, in probably 70% of sharp, uh, semi-sharp people's breakdowns is that I just don't get why Moroz is not the favorite here, that this should be the other side. Silva has probably pretty poor cardio, not to mention the fact that Moroz beat her before. Now, again, that was 2014, but it's in Silva's head, so to speak. Not to mention the fact that Moroz She's very solid. She has good takedowns. She's she's not going to be submitted. And then that's the that's the other thing is that Moroz is just never been submitted. So all of that to say that Moroz is where all this all this sharp action is going. So what we're going to do is we are going to take Silva inside the distance, okay? Because you know what, Moroz has never been finished. So Moroz inside the distance, uh, and we're not going to just play by submission. That's you know because that's probably going to be the overvalued piece. Let's just play her inside the distance in general. Uh, Silva by TK or submission plus 150. And we're going to bet that for one week. Uh, we'll log in. We can't log in yet, but we will log in at the end. Um, so we're not going to be able to do this right now because as I mentioned, uh, DraftKings hates Zoom. So it's going to let me look around. Okay. All right. So that's fine. We'll get there in a sec. All right. Uh, next fight we have um, 
Andrea Lee versus Natalia Silva. All right, Andrea Lee is just is just the pick of the year. You know, like Andrea Lee is solid everywhere. You know, she's she's been around the block. Her level of competition is so much higher, and th this line is just way too wide. You know, factor in the fact that women's MMA carries with it so much variance that Silva at like minus three twenty five is completely terrible. Angie Lee is an incredible value peak seater. She's got the takedown upside. And essentially, Natalia, Natalia Silva really hasn't fought anybody since her comeback. And this line is just ridiculous. The only side you should play is, Natal is, is Angie Lee. So we are going to be on the Natalia Silva side. Um, I really do think that's where the majority of the value is going to lie here. Now, we're not going to bet her at minus 325, um, but we're going to bet her in some other way. So um let's take a look at this silva by decision plus 110 but we are going to fade this narrative that andrew lee is tough and again she doesn't get finished so we're just going to take natalia silva inside the distance so winning method natalia silva inside the distance sometimes the stupid money becomes the sharp money natalia silva inside one e. okay moving on we have Andre Petrosky versus uh, Gerald Mearshart. All right, this is this is the thing. Gerald Mearshart has is has a hundred percent finish rate, and he always just kind of struggles and struggles. And if he survives the first round, he's he's just live as hell for the submission, either round two or round three. And this is just the the nut analysis, the nut narrative throughout the industry. I, I promise you this. If you bet GM3 by submission, if you bet GM3 round three, if you bet GM3 round two, you are losing money long term. Those props are so juiced, okay, uh, towards that narrative that it is just an atrocious bet, okay? We are 100% going to be fading that. Now, on the other hand, you have Andre Petrowski, who they're saying that you know he has a real good path to victory getting him out of there in the first round, but if he doesn't get out of there in the first round, I would be very, very cautious of him late. So what I'm going to be doing here is we are going to play Andrew, Andre Petrovsky late because that is just the side that's just completely ignored here. Now, we could either play him by decision or if we're feeling really spicy, we could play him in a later round. So let's just take a look and see what some of these lines are. Petrosky by decision is plus 330. I mean, that looks really, really strong. You know, and I, I really, I, but the thing is, I think somebody's got to be playing that, right? Because I have heard some narrative that, you know, Petrosky just kind of just stays on top, minds and P's and, P's and Q's, he can get that win. So plus 330 seems like really, really juicy, but I just feel the narrative justifies that a little bit. So maybe this is also sort of overvalued if possible, but I'll tell you what is not going to be overvalued. And this is really gross, but we're going to do it. We're going to play Andre Petrowski in round three plus 900. Okay. Because this is the round where Gerald Mears aren't supposed to take over and where Petrowski is supposed to tire out. Not for me. Uh, I will play him plus 900 for 180. All right, uh, moving on, we have Brad Katona versus Cody Gibson. All right, to me, this is really easy. These are two decisionators, and this is a really boring fight. I don't know why anybody's watching this. So we are just going to play this fight inside the distance. Uh, let's see, round props. No, what are we doing? Fight props. Um, where is Fight lines. Let's see. Fight props. Oh, fight does not go the distance plus 150. So we're going to do that one. All right, uh, moving on. We have, uh, oh, we did the wrong one. That was the Katona fight. Shoot, I did the wrong one first. Sorry about that. Um, Austin Hubbard versus Kurt Holabaugh. That's the other, uh, you know, uh, fight from that, from that uh, promotion. Again, it's a late fight added. It has not been analyzed as much, okay? But one thing I've heard is that Holabaugh is going to be with the one with the finishing upside, okay? Um, he is much more dangerous. 
Hubbard, again, is just going to mind his P's and Q's, maybe beat him at range. So what we're going to do is we are going to take Hubbard inside the distance. Hubbard, let's take a look at this. I don't know whether it's going to be KO or submission. Hubbard by submission plus 800, considering that he might go for takedowns, that looks good enough for me. The one thing I'm going to do, and this is what I do with these kind of weird submission props, I just want to make sure that he's at least gotten a submission once in his life. Okay. If he can do that, let's see, decision, decision, decision. There it is, submission. He got a submission. You're telling me it's Joe Selecki? For real? Good enough for me. Uh, we're going to play Austin Hubbard plus, I almost want to play this for more than one unit, but I can't because of the rules. But Hubbard by submission for 180. All right. Um, we already did uh, Katona versus Gibson. Sorry about that. We did top out order a little bit. Okay, moving on, we have Gregory Rodriguez versus Dennis Chalulian. All right, so Gregory Rodriguez has no chin. His last fight, huge favorite, one round, he just got hit right on the button, and Dennis Chalulian is a type to go for it. So you know what that means? We cannot bet Dennis Chalulian round one. Chalulian right? round one is going to be overvalued. What Rodriguez needs to do is essentially just get this fight to the mat and get the sub, Okay. Very easy path to victory. So you know what that means? We can't bet Rodriguez early, and we cannot bet Rodriguez by sub. Okay. So what we can do, we can either bet Rodriguez by decision or Rodriguez a little bit later. So let's just take a look at what some of these are. Rodriguez by decision is plus 600. That's very interesting. And as far as rounds... Rodriguez round two is plus 450. All right, that looks pretty reasonable. So we're going we're gonna to actually do that. Rodriguez round two plus 450 for 180. All right, uh, now we're going to move on here. We have Chris Weidman versus Brad, Brad Tavares. Chris Weidman is done. I'm just going to repeat a couple of these. Chris Weidman is finished. Chris Weidman is shot. Chris Weidman suffered a broken leg, which was tough to watch, and is on a three-year layoff. And before that, he was looking pretty bad. This is just easy work for Brad Tavares, and that's just the end of the story. So we are going to take Chris Weidman plus the 210. The only thing that makes this one a little annoying is that he still has a little bit of, of, of name value, but in this case, it's kind of reverse name value. Now it's kind of like betting Tony Ferguson. Now people are just going to try to bet against him every fight. So we are going to just play Chris Weidman, Long Island dude, plus 210 for 180. Um, all right. This is the fight that I am, I, I, I've been waiting for this situation. I, I did this in the last fight, by the way, Marlon Vera had. So this is the easy 100% narrative about Marlon Barrett. He is a slow starter. So what you do is you wait for him to lose round one, and then you live bet him round two. Just easy, easy money. And I think about this, and everybody is on this same narrative. You think DraftKings and the sports books are that dumb that they're going to give you a good line on that? Whatever that line is, is going to be atrocious, okay? What I did last time Vera fought was against Sanhagen. We had the same thing. After round one, you know what I did? That's Sanhagen. Thank you. You know, took my 1-0 lead and rode it to an easy victory, okay? So that is what I want to do here. Um, now, this might end up being a, um, whatchamacallit, a, uh, this might end up being something you don't get to play. You know, like, so if, if Vera knocks him out in the first round or if Monius knocks him out in the first round, then you're not going to be able to do it. But what I want you to do is that after round one, all right, whatever happens, just play Munoz, okay? Promise you, you're getting a good value. Now, if Munoz wins the first round, or it looks like he won the first round, then I promise you, 
you're getting like not only good value, but you're also, you know, probably you have a guy with the lead, you know? So, so that's what you have to do. Now, this is one fight I'm not going to probably be around for. Actually, I might get back to this one. If I am, I am going to be betting this one live. Um, so this is one that, again, is not going to go on this list. So actually, but we are going to presume it loses when we bet the main event. So what we're doing is waiting, waiting for round one to end and then playing Munoz over Vera. Uh, now, obviously, for those of you that, that sometimes goes a lot of you commenting the threads about, you know, trying to get better at this. Yes. Another way you could play this fight, if you don't want to remember to do that, is you could play Vera round one because Vera is the notorious slow starter. So, like, if you wanted to, you could play Vera round one, which would be plus 900. And that's actually a really good bet, too. So what you actually could do, you know, I am going to do this. We're going to play Vera in round one plus 900. And we're going to double, we're going to press this. We're going to play a, another 180. And if in fact it gets to round two, so if we lose this one, then we are betting Munoz after round one. So we're putting Vera in round one and then Munoz if it gets to round two. All right, moving on, we have Damon Blackshear versus Mario Batista. Now, this one's real. I mean, this is awesome. Y you have a, so many people out there that love just using the term recency bias. Like they, they said, well, I don't want to have recency bias or so many people have recency bias, so I'm not playing this person. Like like the like the, the Juliana Miller thing, thing from last week, which you're all over the other side. Everybody's like, why has everybody been against Ben's Julia, Juliana Miller? Because of recency bias, okay? But you have the same people who are screaming to not have recency bias. The same people are just pounding Damon Blackshear this week, okay? Damon Blackshear coming off of a, of a awesome round one sub last week, okay? Now everybody, the same Sharpies were saying, oh, forget, we, people are too recency biased. They're all betting Blackshear coming off of that. Um, the, the fact remains is that he had a style advantage over his last fighter who was on short notice. And now he does not have the style advantage coming over, coming, and now he's the one on short notice. To me, it's like almost like seems too easy to play Batista here. Um, but because Blackshear is taking all this money, I I just don't get it. So we are going to, uh, we are going to take the Batista side here. Um and we're going to play him, I guess, we're going to pick our favorite round. I guess if he is on short notice, we'll give, we'll give him a round to kind of do some stuff. But, oh, there are no actual fight lines yet. So what we're going to do is, is we are going to, um, you got to trust me on this. We're going to play Bautista inside the distance, whatever it is. Okay. Either that or maybe Bautista round two. No, because no one's playing him round one either. Nobody's nobody's going to play Batista inside the distance here, because Demond Black should just had the big win. He's got the takedowns. He's tough and all that stuff. So you're going to have to trust me. Whatever Batista is inside the distance, whenever that comes out, we're going to be playing. All right, uh, Neil Magny versus Ian Gary. Um, Ian Gary is basically a fraud. I mean. He, you know, he just talks and talks and talks. But the fact remains that he really hasn't, hasn't beaten anybody. He almost got rocked by, he got rocked by Jordan Williams in his first fight. He got knocked down two fights ago, whatever it is. And Neil Magny, he has that ability to like drag this fight like into deep waters, you know? So the thing is, is that if, if Ian, Ian Gary better get him out of there in the first round, because if he doesn't, he's in very big trouble. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be betting Ian Gary late. Okay, we'll either be betting Ian Gary in a late round or by decision. So let's just take a look at it. Ian Gary by decision is plus two hundred, but the thing is that that's not the that there is a narrative with that because he has one kind of a decision in the last couple of fights. So they think you know Maggie might be good enough to survive. And this Ian Gary by submission is a very popular sharp take now, so we can't bet that. But what we can do is play Ian Gary in a late round. So let's take a look at this. Ian Gary round two, that's like, 
that's pretty strong at plus 500. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. Ian Gary, round two, plus 500. All right, what do we have? Just a couple more? We have the five round fights yet? Or we have one more? No, we're at the five round fights. Um, so we have Zhang Wei Li versus Amanda Limosh. Um, Zhang Wei Li is basically just a crusher. You know, she she she's she might be about even with Limosh on uh, and on the feet, but when it comes to striking, I just comes at wrestling. Wrestling, she just has such an edge here that she's just kind of take over. You know, it's it's really really an easy situation for her and the five rounds just doesn't, doesn't hurt. So, I mean, it's just a question of how you really want to play Zhang Wei Li. So we will take Lemos plus the 250. Amanda Lemos plus 250 for 180. All right. So if we follow it along, we have uh, several just terrible plays that we've made. Kareem Silva, I mean, we're going against the super sharp Morose take. She's never been finished, so we're going to better to get finished. We have Natalia Silva to get there over Andrea Lee, the one who never, who's super tough, who's faced a much stronger level of competition. This line is way too wide, so Beth Silva is being a sucker, so we'll do it. Uh, Petrosky, he either gets Mirchard out of there round one or maybe lays on him for a decision, but these, this GM3 round three is where the action is, so we will take Petrosky round three. Katona Gibson, really boring fight, so we'll bet this one to end inside the distance, plus 150. Hubbard against Kolobau. Kolobau is really the one with the finishing upside, so we will take Hubbard to win by submission, plus 800. Gregory Rodriguez, again, you know he's either going to go for that takedown and get it done early, or maybe Tolulian gets there in round one. So we're going to play Rodriguez in round two, plus 450. Chris Weidman is done, shot on the way to retirement. So we'll play him plus 210. Marlon Vera is either going to, Marlon Vera is going to lose round one and then take over late. So what we're going to do is we're going to play Vera by KO in round one. And if in fact it goes to round two, we're going to play Munoz in round two. All right. Uh, Neil Magny, very, you know, very savvy veteran. He's going to hang on Gary. Um, and probably just drag him into deep waters. But Gary just might be that much better and get him out of there in the first round, all right? Or if we don't believe in Gary, but he might just be good enough to win, you can play him by decision. So we're going to do none of those things. We'll play Gary to win by TKO in round two. Um, ooh, did I mean to do this by exactly TKO? No, we did not. Sorry. What I meant to do was just Ian Gary round two by any by any means. Hold on a minute. So we have to be playing a little bit. We have to get a little bit less of a price. Ian Gary just to win in round two. Wait, round prop. Sorry about that. Yeah, so it's going to be a little bit lower. Yeah, plus 400. Sorry about that. Um, then you have Amanda, Amanda Limosh, uh, you know, Zhang Weili just has her covered everywhere. Probably about even on the feet, but the wrestling and the cardio, she's just going to dominate her. Uh, so we will take Lemos plus the 250. So when all of those things lose, okay, when all of those things lose, why do I only have 10 fights here? Oh, because we didn't put in the Blackshear fight, right? Blackshear, uh, Batista, whatever, he is going to be, um, we're going to bet him inside the distance, whatever it is, okay? Because Blackshear is tough. He just had a sub last week. He obviously wouldn't take this fight on short notice like this if he weren't fit. Um, and Batista's a fraud, all this stuff. So we'll take Batista inside the distance. I feel as though I'm missing a fight, though. So if there are 12 fights, we forgot the Batista fight. Oh, right, because the um, we're still doing the main event. All right, so seeing that we're going to go 0-11, um, what are we going to do with this main event? We have to get 12-1. to 1. So let's talk about the various uh, narratives. Well, obviously, if Sterling wins, it's going to be because he was able to get his takedowns and, you know, control him and maybe submit him, okay? Um, if O'Malley wins, it's probably going to be by KO, right? So these are the things that we cannot bet. We cannot bet Ster can't bet Sterling by submission, and we can't bet O'Malley by knockout. So we could play, and I, 
Sterling by decision is going to be too, too short. So we have to think about either O'Malley by decision oh, or something else. Ugh, can we do this? Oh, either O'Malley by decision, Sterling by KO, a particular round, or what I really don't want to do, but I think I might have to. I'm going to do it. So here's here's the here is the uh, here is the narrative. Ready? Uh, for those of you who were here last week, this wasn't tough enough. Sterling comes out of there, takes him down, beats the crap out of him, holds him down, almost even gets a finish first round, but he doesn't get there, and he gets a 10-8. You hear where I'm going with this? Then O'Malley gets his act together, puts on a pretty good striking clinic, and goes three rounds to one, ending in a draw, plus 50 to one. Now, we don't have to play this for 180. All right, to get our money back, obviously, but we will play it for ninety at four to win uh, to cash at forty five ninety. Now, what I can do also is I have the BR to do this. I could put ninety on something else that can win our money back. So let's go back to some of these other uh, props here. So I, I guarantee you that Sterling by KO in general is just not going to be big, big enough. Like plus five fifty, O'Malley by decision. O'Malley by decision is plus nine hundred. That's not going to get our money back. That's pretty damn close to get our money back, though. Now, we're just going to have to pick a certain round here. So we could play Sterling. Boy, Sterling by submission in any of these late rounds is going to work. Okay. But the Sterling by KO is the one that really is, is, is interesting to me. You get the takedown, gets him into mount, and goes for the ground and pound. We could do this in either round one. Actually, we can't do it anymore in round one because we've already wasted 90. We're going to play Sterling by KO in round two plus 22 to one. Let's go. Um, so again, re recapping, uh, Silva by uh, Silva inside the distance against uh, the tough Moroz who never gets finished. Natalie Silva, uh, overhyped prospect against an Andrew Lee who's been around the block. We'll take her inside the distance plus 175. Andrzej Petrowski, you know, we're going to put GM3 round three. No, ooh, we messed up. We met Petrowski round three. What are we doing? Uh, Katona Gibson, most boring fight on the card. So we're going to bet that to finish. Hubbard, uh, where where Halaba has all the upside. We're going to play Hubbard by decision, plus 800. Rodriguez, round two, because round one belongs to, you know, if he gets there, it'll probably be a quick takedown in round one. Otherwise, he's going to get knocked out. So Rodriguez, round two, plus 450. Weidman, shot, retired, plus 210. Vera, round one, because he never wins round one, plus 900. And if that loses, we're going to go on to play Munoz, round starting uh, live betting after round one. Limos, plus 250, because Zhang has her covered everywhere. Ian Gary, round two, plus 400, um, because Magny will drag him into deep waters, unless Gary's just that much better, in which case Gary will win round one. And then Aljamain Sterling with a 10-8 round, followed by three, three, three rounds to one for O'Malley, plus 50 to one. Let's go. And if that doesn't work, we'll take the easy way out. We'll take Sterling, round two, TKO, 90 to win, 2,070 adults. And we will put this in just as we log off of this, and that should do it. Good luck, everybody.